Hi, my name's Steve Mango. I'm an actor, a business owner, and I was a four-year parishioner of the Church of Scientology Celebrity Center in Hollywood. The Sea Org is the religious order of the Church of Scientology. Their members are kind of maybe like what a priest would be in a Catholic church. They're the church management. They're the auditors, which are basically like counselors. And Sea Org members have to sign billion-year contracts to be a member of the Sea Org. Now, they sign a billion-year contract because they believe they come back lifetime after lifetime. And in your new life, you are expected to come back as a Sea Org member and re-sign up for service. The PTSD that I suffer from is because of these Sea Org recruitment cycles that they put me through on a daily basis. Now, they don't take no for an answer. On their routing forms, they go through a process to recruit a new person into the Sea Organization. And the end product of that is a Sea Org member who signed up and ready to begin. Now, until you're ready to sign that contract, they will go for hours and hours and hours and hours until they reach that end product, which is you joining the Sea Organization. I never joined the Sea Org. So they would just keep me for hours locked in these rooms, recruiting me, abusing me emotionally, and just trying to get me to sign that Sea Org contract. Now, they would say, you are being selected to be a Sea Org member. This is the most elite and important mission that you can undertake in this lifetime. And we need you to understand that it's just your reactive mind that's holding you back from joining the Sea Organization and your silly you know, purposes and goals to maybe want to be in the entertainment industry. You can't do that. You have to be a Sea Org member now. And they would just keep me for hours and they would never let me go. And I have so many traumatic memories of being recruited into the Sea Org. Now they say this is the most elite and important mission in the world that you can undertake. Now why aren't people lined up outside the recruiters' offices like begging to join? They're putting all this force and pressure and abusive behaviors onto me to get me to join. But, you know, why aren't people, you know, begging to join this group? There must be something off. And that's what I learned. All these Sea Org atrocities and abuses that happened. Just Google Scientology Sea Organization. Go on Amazon and look up books on Scientology. There are a number of books about abuses that happened inside the Sea Organization. Now, for example, say you were in the Sea Org for 15 or 20 years and you leave. You owe the amount of money that they pay to train you in their courses. You have to pay back your expenses. It's called your freeloader bill. So there are Sea Org members who, after they leave the Church of Scientology, after maybe 15, 20 years of dedicated service, they may get a bill for a half a million dollars. They suggest to women to have an abortion if they get pregnant, if they're a Sea Org member, because they believe a kid's just going to hold back a woman from their mission as being a Sea Org member because it requires a lot of devotion and you can't have a kid. So they'll say, look, you know, if you want to be a Sea Org member, this is what you got to do. And they recommend that they have an abortion. Now, sure, they can say, no, I'm not having an abortion, but they'll be kicked out of the Sea Org. Now, if you're in the Sea Org for 20 or 30 years and this is all you know, you have no other life skills, you have no money, you don't have a credit card, you don't have anything you're going to follow Scientology's orders. They're going to put the pressure on you to maybe have the abortion or else they'll demote you to one of their lower organizations. And that's maybe not an option for you because you may not be able to support yourself in the outside world and be a regular staff member. So what happens? A lot of women are forced to have abortions by the Church of Scientology. The Jameses say their troubles with Scientology began when they wanted to have a baby. When Lucy became pregnant in 1990, she says she was pressured to have an abortion. I was escorted to the ethics division and then I was put in a room and then a, a gentleman came in and sat down and said, you know, this is wrong, you know, you need to terminate the pregnancy. They told you that flat out? Oh yeah, oh yeah. There's a punishment program that Sea Org members may be put on, which is called the Rehabilitation Project Force, or RPF. So say your stats are really down, or you're not producing, or you do something that's, you know, against the aims of the Church of Scientology. They can force you to go on this program. Now, this program is basically manual labor. You may be digging ditches for Scientology. You may be painting walls. You're doing manual hard labor from sunup to sundown and you're doing it with another person until you come to the realization that, you know, Scientology is good and I'm going to reform and I'm going to really, you know, try to, you know, produce for this group. So 
they say, oh, look, you know, this program is totally voluntary. It's up to the Sea Org member to decide whether or not to do the program and get into good graces with the church, or you have to route out of the Sea Org and you have to leave and you can never do Scientology again. Because they're saying to a lot of ex-members, well, look, you know, the program's voluntary. You don't have to subject yourself to that. Well, of course, not anyone could, you know, walk out the front door, but Scientology has these spiritual traps. You either do the program and you can become a Sea Org member again. You have no money. You have no car, no home. You have basically nothing. All your family and friends are inside the church. They'll say that you can't do the bridge to total freedom, especially if you have to, you know, depart Scientology in this way. So what do you have? They place you in that trap. So what do people do? They end up spending years on the rehabilitation project force being tortured, trying to get into good graces with the church again. And they abuse these members. And eventually maybe they do get back to being Sea Org members. But just the amount of spiritual and emotional and the amount of... Um, distress they place on them under this program, they're more controlled, they're more weak-willed, and they really just beat these members down horribly. Actors are the perfect candidate to be Sea Org members. Actors come out to LA full of hopes and dreams, and they try to pursue their acting career month after month, day after day. But it's expensive to live in Los Angeles. It's expensive to market yourself as an actor, to take these classes. It's not easy, and it's not easy even getting a day job just to support your acting career. Now, if you become a Scientologist and be an actor, you know, they're going to start trying to get you to join the Sea Organization. And, you know, at first you're going to be like, no, like I was. I'm very ambitious. I don't want to join the Sea Org. I want to pursue my acting career. But there may catch you at a time where you had a, maybe like a really bad audition, or you may realize like, look, I'm never going to be a main stage act. Maybe now I can be in the Sea Organization. Maybe I could live at the church. I can sing, I can dance, I can be an actor. Whatever it is that you do, they'll promise you that you can do that inside the Sea Organization. All your expenses are paid for, and you're a real true believer maybe at this point in Scientology. So they get these really talented people to join the Sea Organization. And then they kind of switch the plate and say, you know what, right now we need this post filled where you know you can maybe be a registrar, for example, or a course supervisor. And at this point, you might have given up your car, you sold your home, you might have given up everything. Or maybe you didn't have anything to start with, and Scientology is the way that you can avoid being homeless. So what do you do? You go off and be a core supervisor, and you give up on all your artistic dreams. Scientology makes you forget all about them. Being a Sea Org member isn't as glamorous as they say it is. You may work 80 to 100 hours a week for the church, and you get $50 a week. It doesn't get any higher, any lower than that. You make your standard base $50. Now that $50, you know, may be going towards, say, like shampoo or soap or just your basic living essentials. Or maybe you're turning that money over to the International Association of Scientologists. So that money that you make basically goes back to Scientology, so you never really have like that escape route of maybe saving money and being able to use it towards anything. You make a very low amount of money you're working these excruciating amount of hours. You can't leave the Scientology base unless you go off with someone, and that's very rare. You don't get vacations. You may have two or three days a year to take a vacation day, but they're gonna say, look, you know, your statistics aren't up, or, you know, um, we, we're short-staffed right now. We really need you to stay here. So there are people who work, you know, pretty much year-round every single day, including holidays, for the Church of Scientology. When you're in the Sea Org, you're totally isolated from the outside world. You get no cell phone, you're not able to use your email, any mail that you get to you is read by someone first. So you, you may not even get your mail, especially if there's something that's, you know, critical of Scientology, they're not going to pass your mail along to you. So you're totally secluded from the outside world, especially because you can't read the newspaper. There may be in Theta or bad things in there about Scientology and you can't read that. Can't read a magazine. You're not going to be able to sit down and watch TV or go to the movies. So they totally just seclude you into the Scientology lifestyle by being a Sea Org member.
As I'm on a lunch break from course, I see two different staff recruiters approach the table, and they were recruiting for the new ideal org that was opening up in our area. So they come up to my table and they ask me if they can do a survey on me. And I just say, okay, I'm already on my lunch break, let's just see what they say. So they're asking these questions like, you know, do you agree that people are starving to death and people are using drugs and the state of our planet is just in horrible decay right now? And I'm like, um, okay. Yeah, I guess that's true. Um, you know, do you think that, you know, Scientology can help improve the state of this planet and that, you know, we need to go out there and really just push our message out there? Yeah, I'm a Scientologist at the point I believe that. Well, by joining staff, you're going to be able to get rid of this downward spiral. You're going to be able to be able to help improve the conditions on this planet. And I just was, you know, trying to be polite. I'm telling them, no, I'm not interested. Because at this time, to be a staff member, you had to sign either a two and a half or a five year contract. And you have to work pretty much a minimum of 40 hours a week for the church, at day or at night. Now during the day, I needed to keep my days open. I was doing background and stand in work and I was also auditioning for TV and film roles. So I don't really have the time to commit, say nine to five to Scientology. Well, you could work in the evenings. Well, I wanted those evenings to devote towards my acting career. And my whole thing was, look, I'm going to be able to disseminate Scientology on such a grand scale by being a famous actor. I'm going to be able to be like Tom Cruise and go on Oprah's couch and be able to talk about the powers of Scientology. I had every intention on doing that for Scientology because I believed that they were helping me. But, you know, they didn't want to hear any of that. They want me to be a staff member. So one of the guy goes off and he's talking to his boss and they're trying to find different ways to handle me. And they knew my acting career was a big button for me. My acting career was my main thing in life. I had to be successful as an actor or else my life didn't have meaning at that time. I was really ambitious and really motivated and that's why I wouldn't join staff. So they needed to try to figure out a way to get me to join. And you know, there's just a point where they just got really upset because we're spending hours and hours of them trying to recruit me at this point. Actors are scum. They're, you're not gonna be like no Tom Cruise or some shit. No, none of you actors in this place are. You're just wasting your time unnecessarily in these acting classes and auditioning. You're not going to really be able to help anyone as an actor. Actors are just downtone people. You're portraying those type of people in your work. You're portraying, say, psychiatrists. Maybe you're pursuing a homeless person or you're just, you know, taking on that beingness of those characters. Now you don't want to take on the beingness and take on the persona of these horrible, horrible types of people in the world. No one's going to see the film that you're self-producing anyways. You are a Scientologist now. You have been here and you understand our mission. And our mission's clearing this planet and helping improve the state of this planet with Scientology. And we're not gonna do that by just having other people like you just, you know, take this like passive role and just try to, you know, pursue their silly dreams of being an actor. They thought, you know, just give up on being an actor and become a staff member now. And I'm thinking, okay, now this is a church that L. Ron Hubbard is, you know, saying that artists are like the most valuable people to society. You know, he thinks like, you know, artists are contributing in such a big way. He said that a culture is only as great as its dreams, as its dreams are dreams by artists. And they can create such aesthetic, beautiful things in this world, these artists. But yet, you know, the tables turn and they say, look, you know, that's great and all about your silly dreams, but you know, you can, you know, have your past memories about them and now it's time to take responsibility and become a staff member. But I saw the out point about it. I saw that the church is, you know, promoting artists and then when you get in a little bit more, they bait and switch and say, you know what, that whole artist thing is all bullshit. You know, it really rubbed me the wrong way because I'm thinking, well, maybe you know, there are other courses or other things are going to switch up on me. And I've already donated all this time and money, so I'm still really invested and I still really believe in it. But just something was off. I just really felt depressed at this point and I just didn't know what to do. And I just told them, no, it's not going to happen. And they're yelling at me and they're screaming at me and they're telling me I'm one, one on the tone scale. I'm equivalent to a criminal. I'm a horrible person. There's no reason why a real true Scientologist wouldn't join staff. 
and the way that they emotionally abused me for hours and hours, day after day, month after month, I knew that being a staff member was just going to be a horrible, horrible experience because look at how they're treating me now just to get me to join. I knew there was something wrong. If they had to be so abusive towards me just to get me to join, it must not be as good as they say it is. So I didn't join staff at that time. So one time I was at one of the events and two SEER recruiters brought me to the back to try to recruit me. Now my stance amongst most of these SEER recruiters, they know it's a no. I'm not going to join and it's not going to happen so don't waste your time. So while I'm in the process of being recruited by these two Sea Org members, another two approach the table and they start getting really angry and they tell these guys not to waste their time on me. Steve's a pussy. He needs to grow a pair of balls and handle and confront what the condition on this planet is and he can't do that. He's just a sissy. He's not going to be able to be in the Sea organization. Don't waste your time trying to recruit this just basically like this piece of shit. They just said it straight out. And to think that these people are supposed to be these elite members of society and they're willing just to talk to a future potential recruit and they're willing to say these sort of horrible things about me. It just made me more, you know, willing just to say no and this isn't going to happen. I'm not going to join the Sea Org. I just totally was like, look, after hearing that, I was on my way out of Scientology. Little did they know. At another event, I had these two really hot Sea Org members come up to try to recruit me. And I basically shut them down right away and I said, look, I'm not going to join the Sea Org. It's not going to happen. Don't waste your time with me. I'm just going to tell you no. They're, they're laughing and they're like, look, we know you're not interested in joining the Sea Org, but we want to show you this presentation and these videos and we really want to show you what the Sea Org is actually about so you can see what we do and you can just have a little bit more of affinity for our group because you can see the dedication us Sea Org members put in. So I'm thinking, well, you know, okay, these are these two cool hot Sea Org members. Let me give them a shot and see what, see what it's about. They said no pressure. They're not going to try to recruit me. Let's just hang out and have a coffee. So they decided to meet me at the coffee bean next door of my house. Just let us know what time's good for you and we'll meet tomorrow. So the next day comes around and it's a bait and switch. It's not the two hot Sea Org members. It's some ugly ball guy and some really dorky looking girl. So I'm like, just like everything else in Scientology, they can't just follow through on what they say. So I'm sitting there at the coffee bean and I'm watching all these really crazy propaganda videos, how the psychs are destroying the world, how everything we see in the media is basically through these companies that have different psych messages that they implant into us and how we need to audit out mankind's fourth dynamic engram and that's what's holding us back in life because we all have this same engram that's implanted into us that you know Sea Org members are working to eradicate and you know we're going to be able to clear this planet and they're just really going on like really kooky like I was in Scientology for a while and I was kind of aware of some of their aims and missions and some of these different kind of things but just all of it together was really Really kooky. I mean, they're showing me like a Britney Spears music video and showing how she's promoting, you know, deviant sexual behaviors and how, you know, in the Sea Org we're working to erase those type of things from people who get those messages inside of themselves and start acting out sexually. It's crazy. And I really like Britney Spears, so I, I automatically like discredited everything that they said about, you know, Britney's message. Anyways, so they start really hitting me to join the Sea Organization. And I said, look, this is you guys already knew. I told those other two guys that I wasn't going to join the Sea Organization. And I feel pressured and I'm not going to, you know, join the Sea Organization. Well, the pressure is your reactive mind and your questioning answer back and forth. You can make the decision to be a Sea Org member right now. And there doesn't have to be any pressure. We don't care if you join the Sea Org or not. We're just trying to look after you and help you. So I get into the whole thing about my career and how I'm not going to give up my career to be um, a Sea Org member. So the girl, you know, she's like a young girl. She's maybe like 18 or 19 or something like that. And she starts talking to me. She's like, look, you know, my whole life I was a musician. And I really just wanted to go out there and make effects with my music career. And I had the opportunity to do that because I got um, some sort of like a um, development deal through a record company. But I gave that up to be a Sea Org member because she felt like she saw the real purpose of what the Sea Org was about after watching this crazy video. 
but I saw the pain in her eyes. I see how upset she was, even though she wasn't really showing it, but I could, I can read through people. And I saw how sad she was. And I'm like, look, the Sea Org is ripping apart people from, you know, promising careers and just a family life. And it's just that they just really hurt these people and they really mess them up because they feel like they have to do Scientology or else, you know, whatever else they were doing was just meaningless in life. So I'm sitting there, and at that point, I, I mean, there was a point where I was really vulnerable and my career wasn't really moving, and there might have been a chance that they could have maybe have caught me to join the Sea Org at one of these, you know, junctures. But at this point, I'm like, it's not going to happen. No, I, like, I, I couldn't give up that career. I was so motivated. I just had to make it happen for myself. So I told them no, and they go off on me. They're yelling at me. You are a horrible, disgusting excuse for a human being. You shouldn't even be living right now because you don't contribute anything into this world. They're screaming at me at the top of their lungs inside the coffee bean. And I'm saying, just like I said before, there's no way that the Sea Org is this beautiful, ethical, amazing group that they make it out to be. They're abusing their members. And they're abusing me right now emotionally, telling me that I'm not going to go up the bridge in Scientology. Basically, everything in my life is, you know, it's just gone to hell, basically, because you're not willing to attain that spiritual freedom by being in the Sea Org. And at that point, I'm like, look, I need to take a little Scientology break. So I took a break for a little while, but that didn't stop them from continuously trying to get me to join the Sea Organization. This really pretty Sea Org member from the Celebrity Center saw me check into one of their events, which was their maiden voyage event, which they hold every summer. So I came there alone and she was trying to, you know, befriend me. I really want to interview you because I told her about my acting career. She's like, look, can we do like a quick interview before we go into this event? And I'm thinking, well, the event's going to start in like 20 or 30 minutes, so it's not like we have a lot of time to do an actual interview, but I'll be happy to, thinking she's going to ask me questions about the industry or whatever. So she starts asking me questions like, you know, have you ever done LSD before? Do you have any psychiatric history? Have you ever been institutionalized? She's basically trying to qual me for the C organization to see if I'm qualified. But, of course, they have to try to find tricks to get you to actually go through with the whole recruitment cycle because no one's going to agree if they say let me just re you know recruit you to the C organization she's asking me all these questions just to find out if I'm qualified it's not any pressure to actually join if I actually am of course I am because I have a pretty clean slate in life I haven't really murdered or killed anyone and I don't have excessive debts all the things that they ask you before joining the C organization so we're at the Hollywood and Highland Center where the event is at the Kodak Theater and you know, I'm there at the end of the event for like eight hours with this Sea Org recruiter. And, you know, at first she's just trying to be my friend and she's trying to tell me about, you know, how, you know, I'm going to meet so many people in the Sea Organization. And we're all actors too. So don't worry about like having to give up your acting career. We're all actors and you could be an actor in the Sea Org. Now, like I've said, being an actor in the Sea Org isn't like being an actor out in the real world. You can't audition for a TV show. You're not going to be a Modern Family. You're going to be in, you know, one of their Dianetics DVDs. If you're lucky to actually have the chance to be in one of their Scientology films as a Sea Org member. So they try to trick actors and feel like, well, you know, we're also actors too. You're going to meet so many nice people and we're all creative and we're all trying to, you know, help forward L. Ron Hubbard's message. And this is what you want, right? So they lay it on really hard. They put the CR contract and the pen in my hand. They say, look, you're in on the greatest push in the last 2,500 years. You're going to be an auditor and you're going to help us clear this planet. And we're not basically taking no for an answer because we're trying to help you. And we know it's your reactive mind that's holding you back from actually joining. So just listen to us, trust us, and sign the contract. I wasn't budging. I had the contract in my hand and I'm like, what do I do? I've never actually had the contract in the pen and actually been told, sign the contract right now. And we're going to announce you too. We're going to announce you to this whole event. You're going to go on stage in front of thousands of people and we're going to announce you as our newest Sea Org member. And they were just trying anything to try to, you know, make me feel like, okay, I'm going to do it right now because you can't think about it. If you think about it, what they say, most people don't join if they think about it because they find all the reasons in the world. They let the outside world influence them. They may, you know, have a home or a car or other things. They're not seeing the real purpose of what the Sea Org is about that they're presenting right now. And if you can agree and put that intention here right now to join the Sea Org, 
then you know all those other things aren't going to matter. We'll help you sell your home, your car, whatever. So they really put pressure on you to join right now. So the girl tells me, she's like, look, I cried when I signed my Sea Org contract. I didn't necessarily want to you know, do it. I had other goals and things that I wanted to do in my life, but I joined and now my life is better. Now life is actually meaningful because I'm able to help so many people. And you know, I was almost ready to cry because I just wanted to go home after these long Sea Org cycles. So I had all these other recruiters around me and they say, look, can we schedule a meeting for tomorrow? And we're going to show you videos and they're going to basically, you know, show me what being a Sea Org member at the Celebrity Center was like. So I said, okay. At the time I said, okay, sure, I'll come in tomorrow at 11 in the morning. Because that was the only way to get out of you know, the Hollywood and Highland Center that night and be able to go home. Because if I didn't say that, that I'd be willing to agree to meet with them, I would have had to sign that contract because they don't take no for an answer. Their end product is Sea Org member on post. So until I sign that contract, I'm screwed. So my way out was, I'm going to see you tomorrow. And I didn't show up to the org for a couple of weeks because I just couldn't handle being in these Sea Org cycles. But yet I went back and they continued. So one time I was locked in the Celebrity Center with one of their staff recruiters. It was about 3 a.m. and unbeknownst to us, we were actually locked in the building because they closed up shop for the night. So I'm in CC with the staff recruiter and he wouldn't let up. He's hitting me and he's not taking no for an answer. So it gets to a point where he starts to kind of like run like some form of like an auditing process on me where he puts the contract in my hand and he puts the pen in my hand and he starts running a process and he starts going, put that pen on that paper. Thank you. You know, withdraw. Okay, good. Now put your pen on that paper. Good. Sign the contract. And now you think after you've been in there for like 10 hours and you're tired and you're weak and you're hungry and you haven't slept and you've been on course all day and you're reading these books and they're brainwashing in and of, of themselves, sign the contract. We won't even put it into effect. We just want to see if you can confront the contract and sign the contract. And then, of course, if you sign it, they'll say, oh, well, let's put it into effect. They already got your signature. They just do anything to get you to sign these contracts. So, you know, you start feeling kind of controlled and numb and you know you're like yes I'll put the pen on that paper and you're like well wait a minute you know I'm not uh, this is not what I'm I'm not signing up for this no you're not tricking me so we try to leave after hours and hours of him recruiting me and the doors locked we found out that they locked the front doors so then I remember from the purification program, they have a back door that if you kind of hip chuck it, it locks the other way so then we can escape out of the back of the celebrity center. Because I'm thinking, oh crap, I'm going to be stuck here with this Sea Org recruiter until tomorrow morning and then he's just going to keep hitting me and hitting me and hitting me to join staff. And I wasn't budging for it. But to be in Scientology and to continue on with my services, I had to sit through these Sea Org recruitment cycles. So in one Sea Org recruitment cycle, I had a woman screaming in my face. She told me I'm an enemy of the Church of Scientology, and we are the effing brave ones who can confront the conditions of this planet, and we are the ones who are on, you know, like the front lines of the Church, and we are the reasons why you public members are able to receive Scientology services. And don't you want Scientology to be here in another 20, 40, 50 years for your kids, for your friends, and being able to really help other people in this world? Well, you're not able to, you know, help forward Scientology if you're not going to be a Sea Org member. So she just keep attacking and attacking me and yelling at me and just emotionally just going at me, telling me I'm just this horrible person. And I just couldn't believe how hard that they would just keep hitting me and this was right before I left the church and this was kind of like the last straw for me I wasn't willing to be put up with these abuses so this woman tried every trick in the book we'll make you an auditor we'll let you work in the president's office where all the celebrities go through or you know you could basically have any job within Scientology you just name it we'll put it on your contract so you can work in that department of Scientology but I know how they bait and switch they always say they'll work out the details with you after you sign the contract.